All right, so it's around that time of the year, man. The playoffs are coming. Now, the next video y'all see for me on this channel for the NBA is going to be my playoff predictions. So if you guys do want that, make sure to drop the like. But today, we're going to be reacting to a video going over what winning the NBA title would mean for each contender. Who needs it most? How is it going to affect certain people's legacies? All different types of things. It's a lot of interesting things that could happen in the first round. For the West, it can be very interesting in the East. A lot of things. We're going to be going over a lot in this video. If you guys want more videos like this, just make sure to drop the likes. Make sure to drop the subs. All that good stuff out the way, though. Without further ado, let's hop into it. Let's go! What's up NBA fans, Dom 2 k on the mic and just a quick note before the video starts, we are about this close to 400k subscribers. It's been so long I low-key forgot about the subscriber goals, but yeah, if you enjoy the video, be sure to hit sub at the end, let's go ahead and crack this one open. Uh yeah, it's that time of year again. I think I've made this video every year since 2020 now and they're always fun to look back on. Of course last year okay. I did it and didn't even consider the Boston Celtics so that's fun. But to be fair, at the time, it would have looked incredibly biased. In any case, here we are in 2023 at the Celtics fan, I'm guessing. Here we have what I assume to be a record eight teams that I wouldn't be that surprised to see win the championship or at least be in. And this what I was saying a couple. Now I, I got I got I got the Mavericks wrong. I definitely did. Um, but they still could make the play in. So I, I guess there's still some hope for them because they could play the the Nuggets in the first round. I think Jamal Murray just got hurt. Nuggets haven't really been looking that crazy lately. But it's a lot of stuff that can go over. So let me go over who I think could actually be a contender this year. Um, I think, to be honest, whoever comes out the East are the two people that's going to win. I don't think there's only, like, one team I think could have an actual, like, that actually would win against either one of those teams in the East. Now, I think depending on what team comes out the East, there could be more options. But I think that the Celtics and the Bucks have the highest chance of winning. I think those are the two best teams in the league. I think the only team that could actually beat both of those teams is the Suns. And that's the only team in the West I think has a chance to beat both of those teams. I think the Warriors has a chance to beat the Celtics. I think um, I think um, the Lakers could match up really decently against both of those teams. But if I had to say what team I think would beat or actually could be favored or actually could beat for sure, for sure, could beat, I would probably say the Suns. That's probably the it. Um, but... There are other good teams like the Nuggets that people would say, but I would probably say the Warriors and the Lakers before those that team. I'm not going to lie. Um, I think the Grizzlies are kind of underrated. I think a lot of teams in the West don't want to play the Grizzlies. Like the Lakers. I don't think the Lakers is a good matchup for the Grizzlies, Lakers-wise. I don't. I don't like that matchup too much. Um, the Kings, I think that's a loss. I think they lose first round. I'm not going to lie. Um, let me think. The Clippers, I mean, I think they're going to end up playing the Suns first round, so I, I would say they're going to lose probably. Um, but that's probably it. I would probably say those are the teams. I don't think the 76ers have a chance because I don't think that they, they're going to have to play either the Celtics or the Bucks in the second round, and I'm pretty sure it's going to be the Celtics. So I think they lose that game, that series. Um, and even if they beat them, I don't think they beat whoever the team is because whoever the other team that doesn't have to play – like, the 76ers in the second round, they're going to have a just an easier round. Now, I think if the Bucks have to go against the Cavaliers, that's going to be a kind of a good matchup for the, like, I'm going to be honest, that's a decent matchup. I think they match up pretty decent against the Bucks in comparison to a lot of teams because they do have that little too big combo like the Bucks like to run. I think they kind of can match up pretty decently, but I do think the Bucks will win that. But, yeah, um, I think that it's really only two big teams in the um East, I think it's really one real contender in the West, but there are other teams that definitely could contend, I guess you could say. I wouldn't be surprised. In the NBA I would honestly be surprised at if Nuggets contend. I do understand that the litmus test for a title winner might be, can they beat the Suns? However, knowing how injuries, chemistry, and just unforeseeable that's, that's situations the big deal for the Suns have to affected the last the few seasons, I think it would be foolish to limit the number of teams in this video down to that criteria. Of course, there are safer bets than others. Speaking of which, Chris Paul always getting hurt, of KD getting and hurt like cut. crazy. Yeah, I had a somewhat witty ad transition here, but uh, it did not reach approval in time, so we're just going to start 
the video. Okay. As a matter of fact, yeah, I do have something. Just uh, come through to playback and watch some basketball when you're done with this video. Oh, oh, so we doing ad, uh, hey, I, I should have it in the description, but go down below and follow my kick. I'll be watching the NBA games on there, reacting to the NBA games on there. Y'all can do that with me. I'm going to do that for the playoffs. So, yeah, just go down in the description below. I should have it down there. If I don't, put that in the comments down below, and I got y'all. We'll be on. Starting off with the Celtics, obviously not biased in any way. Once again, winning would mean Banner 18, which they've been in pursuit of. Also, you can't follow time. my Twitch. That's but why I do most of my streams. Story I do the kick strictly for the season. NBA game. As mentioned earlier, it was hard to believe 18 could start as poorly as they did and Damn. realistically make any type of run. I remember not that shot did they too. Come within two wins of the 2022 title, but I believe that stopped them from making some trades they likely would have made had they remained a 500 team. Thus, winning this year would be the completion of a process that began taking shape around. 2017 and we'd likely cease to even be discussing trade rumors that often swirl around this team tatum and brown would finally have their place in history as a to be successful honest dude. i think 2017 uh, if they actually was fully healthy that probably was the best shot to win when Kyrie was there not gonna lie well, and would be in position because they took them to step they took the cast to seven games without Kyrie and gordon hayward to this point, but they just had together, injuries they've been to the conference they finals, still second round fought with finals, J ricky and jason tatum finals this will be their fifth try and i'm just not sure how many more cracks at it they'll be granted by the front office after this given the talks that we hear every year well the bucks are doing the thing again i don't think the there's, i don't think there's a problem between their big duo winning streak and Giannis is being Giannis for the most part while drew holiday is an all-star them actually winning the title will totally depend on Chris Middleton's health come playoff time but I know a lot of people are gonna be like but didn't the Celtics just blow out the Bucks? I'm gonna be honest if the if the playoffs started today I would be picking the Bucks to win the Super ring. I'm gonna be honest. That's what I that's what I would say. Assuming he's okay, they'll be right in the thick of it as usual. Milwaukee going on to do it again would mean their second title in just three years, which obviously would be a big boost to Giannis, who's already a top player of all time. But that I think if Giannis loses this year, it doesn't mean too much. But if he uh, loses this year, it's going to be a lot of pressure next year. In general, you start to discuss all-time greats. Do it with the same core in a short amount of time. You're etched into history in a very legendary way. I focus on that because it doesn't feel like we think of this Bucks core in that sense. Hell, a lot of people were surprised surprised at Drew Holiday's all-star selection. Maybe they'll all be viewed differently if they scale the mountain again this year. Speaking of Drew Holiday, a second championship on top of his all-star selections and the type of two-way player he's been in his career, I feel like the conversation may start to become very different around him as well. Okay, so for the record, the Sixers are a team that I would not be surprised to see in the NBA Finals, but uh, I, I would, would be surprised. If I would be thoroughly surprised. I would be super surprised if the 76ers made the Finals. I would be extremely surprised. Just finally it's got so much going on with that team. I'd be surprised aside, about it. The Sixers have been pretty fantastic after what was an injury riddled start, and I'd say things with Harden have gone about as good as they could have hoped given his injury history. Speaking of which, in the event that Philly yeah, does Harden been pretty done, healthy for the most part this year. Long last be a champion after being in a good amount of situations where it seemed like he'd accomplish it. This would put a cap on what's been a legendary career, and at this point, fulfill probably the only thing he is missing. It'd be quite the shock. As happy as people was like happy for uh, Harden that year, I think people. Be extremely happy for Joel Embiid this year when he won the MVP. To win one. Doc Rivers would be pretty vindicated as well, as he'd have his first title since 08, and it helped rewrite a lot of conversations surrounding his coaching career. And then, of course, Joel Embiid, yeah, it would do a lot for this the team. Of top skill centers of all time, would add the most important hardware after losing out on MVP again and again. You also have to really want this if you're a Philly just in general, because James Not a lot. is on a different timeline than Embiid age-wise, and you've got to start to wonder how many more legitimate cracks at it they'd get before the Sixers have to once again change the cast to keep Embiid's title window open. Finally, rounding out the Eastern Conference, the All right, come on, bro. Cavaliers. Come on, bro. Contenders, come on, bro. There's no way you think the Cavs are a contender. I ain't gonna lie. Once, at least at the moment, health is not sabotaging their ability to reach their full potential, and they've been very solid. They made a go-for-it move with Donovan Mitchell, and I'd say it's paid off as much as it could have thus far. For Mitch, it'd be vindication after many disappointing exits with a limited Jazz team that never did much better than Dark Horse contender regardless of where they were in the state. Standings. Evan Mobley would essentially be kicking off what looks like is going to be an amazing career with the championship, and I definitely would have said Kevin Love would be a two-time champ with the Cavs, but he just got bought out. 
For Cleveland specifically, there's no denying this would be special as it'd be their first major success without LeBron. I think Cleveland is underrated, but what they're not contenders build, in my opinion. There's still been that lingering thought of what if he did a farewell, capping off his career with this amazing core, possibly winning another title. Although he already came back and got the job done, mended relationships with the front office, Dan Gilbert let it be known how much he wanted to be successful without LeBron when he left the first time. There's no doubt that fire is still there and they could truly begin to write a chapter without him, behind a team that could realistically contend for years. That brings us to the Western Conference, which is a bit more interesting these days because of the Kevin Durant trade. With that deal, as alluded to earlier, you could probably argue that if you can't beat that specific team four times, you can no longer get out of the West. Fair point, but once again, I've got PTSD from joining a talent like this after recent events. I've actually got to see them stay on the floor together for legitimate periods of time before I go mentally handing them anything. With that being said, I guess we can just start with them. The Suns absolutely have to win a title at some point in the next year or two with what they just put. No, nah, they have Trading to win as much as they did for Durant means they understood what everyone If injuries see. don't They're if injuries happen then I'm I'm not like holding it against done. them but Chris Paul was looking older, Aiden was looking unhappy I just unfortunate. and they'd already had two cracks at it. Once Paul would have gone on to retire, scaling that mountain would have only been more difficult, especially because if they didn't grab KD, another team was going to. I believe that would have eventually led to a breaking of that core. Now, technically, they're not clear of this issue, but obviously winning a championship would justify the whole no matter what, as it'd be their first title in franchise history. Chris Paul would at long last have a championship, completely rewriting the narrative around his career. Booker and Aiden would likely be at no risk of winning out anytime soon, and Kevin Durant would have his third on top of what's already been a legendary career. Now, given that these three teams would have been so the lame. result of some of the most <laughs> impressive looking rosters of all time, still not exactly sure how this would be received, but in any case, it would behoove Phoenix to take care of this while it's early so they it. don't end up like the next. I was looking at KD shit the other day, man. This nigga it feels gotta like be the most underappreciated uh, superstar all time. Anyone's thinking about. This is still a young but it really is his fault. And really, so this will be I their first really legitimate people, go at it with everyone. He definitely gonna go down Due to that fact, Jokic is possibly headed toward his third straight MVP, with this being the first time he's actually had championship expectations. You hear the rumblings now, but nobody truly cares that he hasn't been able to have postseason success with Will Barton or Monte Morris. Ah! Uh, oh, okay, okay. I guess he's saying... I was gonna say, people definitely care, but... The reason why he hasn't had the craziest postseason success is because the people around him just can't stay healthy. So I kind of feel like that's kind of why the, the Nuggets this year, they've been really, really, like, resting players a lot. So, like, they've been resting people for, like, at least two weeks now. And people have been like, why are they not playing? Why are they not playing? Because every year it just seems like somebody gets hurt right before the playoffs. In 2021, Jamal Murray. Like, come on, man. Like, Michael Porter. Like, come on, man. Like, they just trying to be healthy. And I understand it. This year, Fully. if they don't at least reach the conference finals, I expect the noise to be much louder. Knowing that, a championship before the real noise... Why did that nigga Yoki's look kind of skinny on that dunk? For the Joker. It would also cap off one of the most dominant individual three-year runs we've ever seen from a superstar, and significantly boost his all-time ranking with a ton of time left in his career. Speaking of having time on your side, the all-time ranking... He's not gonna... I, 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 don't, I don't know what you was trying to do with this picture, game, but he's not gonna be better than Hakeem, bro. Oh, I don't give a damn what the nigga does. I'm gonna be honest. He's like... He's not. So I, I don't know what this picture was about. His career. But I'm gonna be Speaking honest. You need to hang that one up, on your side, The Memphis Grizzlies. I will go on record God saying damn. I do not believe this is their year, but it'd be wrong not to include the second seed in the West on this list, given the last team I'm going to discuss. They're generally disliked by fans. They've absolutely not been fine in the West, and their proposed. I think the Grizzlies are very underrated. KD team. says they understand where the roster is at in comparison to some of the teams they'll have to face. That being said, a 2023 title for them would be amazing, considering I just don't think the roster is ready for that yet they'd be winning it before jaw has an elite three-point shot to counter how playoff defenses guard him before they have a legit second superstar level player next to him and in only their second year of having any kind of expectations Jaren jackson getting there he's been playing really year, well without jaw lack of and defensively he's campaign, definitely there he's a defensive superstar for sure course at this specific moment but at long last after rebuilding but people don't care about defense exciting, when they talk about superstars they just talk about offense the jaw has no defense who was drafted in 2019 
would have and, uh, probably led this team to a championship. Jerry and Jackson is better defensively than Jai is offensively. surrounding him and Zion in that draft to get pretty interesting. Speaking of perpetual, well, everybody would say Jai is better than Jerry Jackson. Waiting in the shadows for the day they can have a healthy, uninterrupted run, the Los Angeles Clippers. This team had a collapse in the weirdest season of all time. An injury ruined them in 2021, and more injuries in 2022. Coming into this year, I believe they may have had the most talented roster on paper and were only questioned because of health. In the present day, it's looking about as good as anyone could have hoped. And despite the slow start, they're poised to jump into the third seed if they can keep it together. Well, With it didn't happen. Mind, I'm here to tell you, it didn't happen. A bit similar to the Suns in that it would And Paul George is already hurt. <laughs> nah. Happens Clippers are funny, so man. I ain't gonna lie. The package it took to get Paul George and how only a championship could justify it. This finally becoming a reality would bring the highest honor to a long failing franchise after so many cursed moments. It would also extend the lifetime of this duo as I believe if they don't win this season, they might start looking at how to proceed in recouping assets so they aren't They should have totally been did that. Both guys have a player option in 2025, making next season their official final guaranteed one at the moment. I don't expect either of them to turn down like $48 million, but that would also be their fifth try if they didn't get it done this year, which honestly looks like their best chance. So not that This year looks like the best chance is crazy. Right now, but the franchise is getting pretty close to some dicey situations with this championship window, especially considering the injury track record. Also, as of today, Russell the reason Westbrook why I don't the think they winning that motherfucker. Without game. analyzing that at all, a championship obviously writes a ton of roles. They played the Lakers. They didn't even play bro at all in Those that whole second half. Two bro. situations. I don't know what NBA fans would do if they actually materialized. Russell Westbrook with a championship and the Memphis Grizzlies with a championship. No, nah, Russell Westbrook fans, if he get a championship, boy, I know the narrative is gonna be those. crazy. Either They're gonna way, say about that's him. The whole of it. They gonna say he was always better than Chris Paul. They gonna start saying crazy stuff. If they can get there this season, they've got a chance at winning it. One side note I will leave is that if the Suns become as dominant as their potential allows in the final 20 or so games, this whole video is useless and we're all doomed. However, just let it play out. These things rarely go as planned. Let me know who you think. I think even with how good the Suns are, section. even if they're fully Remember healthy, I think they still probably lose to the Bucks. The video, we are like Celtics is interesting. It's been a long time coming. Or at but least I think they have the highest the chance out of any if team in the West the to course. beat both of those teams. Maybe the Warriors have a better video chance video to beat the Celtics because I think they just kind of got their number. But I don't know. But yeah, that was um pretty much everything he said in there was kind of facts, not really, but yeah, I can kind of see what he was coming for with a lot of the stuff he was saying though. Honestly though, I do think that if we be honest about it, um, I'm gonna save a lot of my opinions for the playoff bracket I'm gonna do next week. But yeah, um, like I said in the video, if you guys want to see my live reactions to some of these games for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Go down in the description, kick.com slash fit slide. That's why we'll be streaming them joints. Um, a lot of stuff coming soon on this channel. Um, the next week, I will be having a playoff bracket. That will be coming. Um, a lot of stuff coming. So just stay tuned. I appreciate all y'all boys showing the support. Make sure to like. Make sure to subscribe. Make sure to do all that good stuff out the way. Without further ado, though, it's your boy Fitz. Yeah, I do it, man. Tell him to bring me my money. Yeah!